as Rob Windsor on uh, an Atlantic Cup uh, race TV here. <laughs> and I'm Captain Dave as well. So we're going to interview you a little bit and talk to you about the Atlantic Cup race and all. Uh, Rob has uh, sailed in every one of the versions of the Atlantic Cup race. Rob, uh, has it been good fun? And what can you tell the kids about racing the Atlantic Cup? Oh, uh, the Atlantic Cup is my favorite um, sailboat race in North America, for sure. Um, and it has been good fun. Um, I, I can't remember if it's six or seven, but uh, it's been every one. Um, and it's been, it's been a really good time. So now what, what, uh, what type of boat do you race on? It's a Class 40, but can you tell the kids a little bit about the boat? Sure. Um, you know, Class 40s are, are very interesting. I'm on one right now, actually. And um, they... Uh, They've got a very different kind of look than most of the boats that most people get to sail on um, in terms of uh, setup and um, because they're set up for just shorthanded racing. Um, what does shorthanded racing mean? Well, shorthanded means uh, with not a lot of people. Um, so oh, okay. shorthanded in the Atlantic Cup is just double-handed. We sail with just two people on board. Um, so it's generally myself and one other person. I've done the Atlantic Cup on um, three different boats um, so far, which is kind of interesting. Um, I know Mike Hennessy is the other guy who's done um, every Atlantic Cup, but he's only done it on his own boat. Um, I did it with Mike one year. I did it with Emma Creighton. And um, I did it with Mika Davis as well. So three different boats. So how, how fast do these boats go? Um, on all three of the boats I just mentioned, I've been 27 knots. That's as fast as I've ever been on a class 40. Wow, uh, and, and a knot's just a little bit faster than a mile per hour. A little, little bit, so yeah, it'd be more miles per hour, for us, right? About 30, about 30 miles an hour. Oh, wow. That's pretty fast on a boat. Now, when you do that, that means you've got all the sails up on the mast and all, and you're in a, you're in a shed, so there's no mast on the boat right now, but that's a lot of power in those sails, isn't it? It is, and really, um, more the power is really based on the hull shape of these boats. They do have a very big sail plan, but the reason they can go so fast is because of the shape of the hull. Um, and uh, so we try to get them to tip over, and we try to get as much um, wind in the sails as possible, and we trim the sails the right way. Um, all those 27 knots or 30 miles an hour were all in a surf, so in a wave. Um, being propelled forward by the wind and a wave at the same time. Sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Could a, uh, could a young person, a young sailor, sail that boat? Um, I think that anybody can sail one of these boats. Um, I think that there's a little bit of a learning curve going from, let's just say, an Opti to a Class 40. There's an awful lot more strings to pull. Um, so that takes a little time to get used to. But um, yeah, overall, it's just a sailboat. I mean, we just have a couple more ropes and a bunch of different colors to pull than, um, than, than you do on an Opti. Sounds great. So I know you've helped me a lot with the Atlantic Cup Kids, page, or kids uh, program at the Atlantic Cup down at the harbors uh, where we've had the kids on the boats and stuff and sometimes at the schools too. What are, what's, what's a couple of things that kids always want to know about the boats and about, about it? What sort of things they ask you and, and then <laughs> what's your answer for them? Some of the best questions uh, that kids ask, they usually say, where do you poop? That's usually after they've walked around the boat, they say, where do you poop? And um, I'm going to turn my camera around right here for you. Um, there's a bucket right there at the back of the boat. Um, and sometimes we use the bucket and sometimes we just use the back of the boat um, to use the bathroom. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier. Um, than um than trying to sit on a toilet down below um so there's that um and i think that they've asked a lot of questions like what do you eat um where do you sleep um we generally eat freeze-dried food um so we boil some water and we fill up a bag with uh with some with some water and we wait a little while and the food prepares itself um that's interesting and we sleep i've got a light where we are out of the water but i've got a light so I can show you what's down below on this boat. This is Toothpaste 2. Um, they came in second in the Atlantic Cup last, last time around. And um, there's a bunk right there and a sleeping bag. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of empty down here, um, which is usually how we have it. Um, this boat's scheduled to go in the water very soon. Um, so we're doing some, some work to get her ready. Um, 
But so, uh, those are, those when, are the you, questions. When, you were, when you were panning down below, I, I saw some electronics there. What, what's uh, are those TVs or computers? Or? Um, let me just turn it back around here for you, Dave. Um, the one in the middle is a computer screen that we use for navigation and weather. Um, the one on the bottom is a just for navigation. That's a B and G Zeus monitor. And we can look up some stuff and use the autopilot um, with that. The other one is uh, wind. And the far right hand little one is, um, is the autopilot um, head down below. And then there's two satellite phones. Oh, cool. So um, I suppose for these young, young aspiring students that might want to be sailors, they're, they really need to know a lot about, about math and a lot about science in order to learn about the weather and navigation. Now, would you say those two, two strong subjects they should study? I would. Um, I, I, I do this for a living, as you know, and uh, my dad was a physics teacher. And so um, we spent a lot of time with math and science in my house. Um, and yeah, um, Math and science is actually how we get this boat to go wherever we want it to go. So um, when, you're, when, you're, when you're sailing with just two people on board, how, so like the first leg is over 600 miles long, so that takes a couple of days, right? How do you guys break up your time on board? Um, yeah, so generally one person will be up on deck like I am right now um, in the cockpit, driving the boat and trimming the sails, and the other person will be down below sleeping and we trade just about every two or three hours. Oh, okay, so you only get to sleep a couple hours at a time. I think I might have lost you there, Dave. Uh, you only get to sleep maybe a couple hours at a time? Hello. Oh, Oop. it looked like we had a little break there. Can you hear me now, Rob? I can, I can, yep. So you were saying you uh, maybe only get to sleep a couple hours at a time? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you get to sleep about 12 hours a day, really, if you did the math right. Uh, you know, you get to sleep half the time, um, but not all in a row. But you're pretty engaged with the racing of the boat, so you really don't sleep that kind of time. You you probably no. sleep four hours a day, don't you? Maybe, if I'm lucky. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a little wound for sound most of the time, so um, yeah. tough for me to get the rest when I want to make the boat go fast. I know my experience when I raced the Atlantic Cup that, um, you know, we slept very little because it was so exciting and pushing real hard to stay ahead of the other competitors and compete with them. I imagine as, I recall, as, I recall, as I recall, Dave, um, you won the Atlantic Cup. Um, and I rem so you must have slept just a little bit less than I did, obviously. So <laughs> that's all I can say. Oh, I, I think, I think we, we sailed well, but I think we were lucky. So we'll take it. We'll, take it. <laughs> uh, well congratulations to you. I'm still trying to get one. Uh, maybe this, maybe this time around. I, so we'll see. Any other uh, great advice? You know, one other quick thing. You know, we're sponsored by Eleventh Hour Racing, and at Eleventh Hour Racing, we're really curious and we're really hopeful to share the experience of sustainability and stewardship, and and talk to kids about clean ocean and and uh, you know uh, sustainable lifestyle. With all your sailing, do you see a lot of trash in the water? Oh, uh, Dave. Unfortunately, I do. Um, and it's really, it's sad. Um, it, um, I've written a couple things about it in the past. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's amazing how m much stuff is in the ocean. Um, everything that you see that's maybe a little plastic cup kicking around in the street. Um, I live here in Portland, Maine. And, you know, at some point that little cup is the breeze is going to blow and it's going to rain and that cup is going to end up in the ocean. Um, and so, you know, as a society, we really need to um, be cognizant of what we do and where we put our trash and our recycling uh, to make sure that it doesn't end up in the ocean. Yeah, I know. I, I, uh, when I sailed around the world, I, I saw trash in just about every ocean I was in. And almost every day I saw something floating. It was very sad and very sad for the animals and the, uh, the sea turtles and the whales and the fish because they're, they look at a lot of these particles of plastic as food and they try to eat it. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, um, I, I noticed, uh, you know, I've been across the Atlantic Ocean quite a few times. Um, the Pacific only uh, uh, just a couple. And the Pacific, I noticed the last time I was across that there was, I just noticed it every single day, some, like a lot of stuff, not just a little, um, which is really sad. I thought maybe the current moves a little faster in the Atlantic and, you know, the stuff just gets out of my line of sight. But um, yeah, the, the, the Pacific was much dirtier to me than, than the Atlantic this past time anyway. 
Yeah, so we can if, if we can encourage these young people to to uh, tell their friends and their parents and their aunts and uncles and all to uh, to you know be careful about what they use and to make sure they recycle and make sure the trash gets in the right place. That would be best for all of us, wouldn't it? It would. I mean, you know, really um, finding some some sort of reusable thing as opposed to so cutting down the usage in general um, would be an even bigger help. But yes, um, what we do use that can be recycled, we really need to make a point of doing that. So along the class 40, um, you guys use reusable water bottles, right? And what do you, how do you generate energy? Do you use solar panels or something um, good like that? Yeah, I mean, this boat that I'm on now, Tooth Face 2, I sailed this boat across the Atlantic Ocean two times um, with the owner, Mike Dries, and we've got solar panels up on board. Um, I've got a plastic sheet over the boat right now. Um, they're doing some work here in the marina. But um, we've got solar panels, and we have a hydro generator off the back of the boat um, so that we can limit our carbon footprint and not have to run the engine um, to, to charge the batteries. And that, that hydro generator is kind of like, it looks like a little outboard motor and turns with the, with the speed of the water passing past it, right? It does, I think I think it might be on board actually, Dave. Let me, let me just have a look down here. Maybe not. Um, I, can, I can take a picture of it for you and send it to you, but um, uh, um, yes, the hydro generator is just uh, basically looks like a, like a little bit of an outboard motor and um, the prop spins and that generates electricity, which goes to the battery bank. And that way we can run our autopilot and get our um, satellite information about the weather and all that good stuff. That's really neat. That's, that's, that's great stuff. And so any, any other great advice for these young, young uh, intrepid young students out there in the world? Yeah, keep sailing, um, keep sailing, keep working at it. Um, you know, everything good comes from hard work. So, um, you know, I don't think uh, I don't think that um, there's any reason why anybody that wants to can't um, get on a class 40 and go and go sailing um, as long as you put the time and effort in. Well, that's a great dream for all these young students following the Atlantic Cup and the Atlantic Cup kids page and and trying to nowadays a lot of them are at home and we're doing our best to uh, to do remote learning for them and show them more about our life. And thanks so much, Rob. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm you Captain Dave, and we're going to sign off from you right now. You got it, Dave. Have a great day, buddy. Thanks. You too. Be safe. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye.